Today, I'm gonna talk about the five things you need to know before you start learning Chinese. Sup, everyone! I'm Rita, aka Fan Lao Shi. Welcome to my channel. I've been in quarantine in Beijing, China, and in DC here in the US for more than four months so far. And I finally got some time to look at the Chinese learning slash teaching content on YouTube, Instagram, and quite a few Chinese teaching websites. Of course, I found tons of videos teaching you all of the HSK vocab, grammar structures, Chinese characters, etc. But surprisingly, there's so little content talking about the real Chinese 101, some fundamental questions about Chinese learning that you may have had for a while, but no one's answered yet. So although I haven't gotten a haircut in months, I just decided to sit here and tell you five things that you need to know before you start learning Mandarin Chinese. And make sure you watch to the end to hear the four steps you can take today to improve your Chinese. Let's go! Number one, what is Mandarin Chinese and how does the language work? Everyone always seems to exaggerate how difficult Chinese is because of how different it is. Well, it is different to English natives, Spanish natives, and basically all learners outside of the East Asia. But we also should be aware of the fact that it is not any less difficult for Chinese people to learn English or Spanish as second language. Each language poses its own set of problems. In Chinese, we don't need to memorize verb conjugations like go, goes, went, gone, going, or any inflections like I, me, my, mine, professor, professor. Mujer, mujeres. The words just stay the same forever and ever, plus that short. Mostly just two syllables. Fangbian. We don't add particles to mark a subject or object like in Japanese. Most of the time, it just follows standard sentence orders. Fangbian. We don't change the order of a statement to ask questions. Instead, we just replace the part we want to ask with a question word. Fangbian. And we don't have a complicated number system like French. In fact, Chinese numbers are probably easier than in almost any other language. You don't have to struggle with all those things, so you can focus on your tones, characters, measure words, etc. That's fair, right? Speaking of pronunciation and tones, number two, do tones matter? Now, we don't have the easiest pronunciation system like Nihongo, and tones, scary, huh? But whether you want to master it or not, you got work on it at the end of the day, as long as you want to communicate with Chinese speakers without too many obstacles. Let me tell you why. When we say Chinese is a tonal language, it means that tones are part of how we pronounce every single syllable and affect the meaning of those sounds, consonants, vowels, and tones. The combinations of the 21 consonants, which are called 声母, and the 39 vowels, which are called 韵母, are pretty limited. And a lot of possible combinations don't even exist. So there are around 400 existing sounds altogether before we add tones. If you don't know tones, a lot of things are gonna sound exactly the same. And in real life communication, tones can be more important than consonants and vowels. Yes, you heard me. As you might know, Mandarin or Putonghua, standard Chinese, is the official language that is used by the majority of people in China. That being said, at least half of the people speak it with regional accents from their local dialects, which could sound completely different from Putonghua. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? So it's super common to meet someone who doesn't really distinguish zhi chi shi versus zi si si or n versus n. I assume that it would confuse you if someone said seat when they meant sheet or said sing when they meant sing, yeah? But most of the time, Chinese people can understand si de when the speaker means shi de or dian yin when he means dian ying. This is because using correct tones makes up for other pronunciation mistakes. And if you are curious how tones can drastically change a word's meaning, check out my Instagram account Fun Chinese Club, where you can see a bunch of these same syllables with different tones. So, if you just started learning Chinese, please hone your tones first. I'll make a video about how to quickly master the four tones and the neutral tone in the future. But in the meantime, know that they're super important. Number three, should I learn Chinese characters? My short answer is 
Yes, we are now talking about learning a few phrases so that you will be able to say ni hao or xie xie for tourism. If you have a long-term learning goal, like to reach an intermediate or advanced level, then you absolutely need to dive into Chinese characters as soon as possible. I've lost count of the beginners I've seen struggling with the characters when they just started trying to memorize all those drawings. But I've also seen so many students at the intermediate level almost applauding how Chinese characters make sense. After they started getting how they work. And you know what makes even more sense? The word creation. As I said, more than 70% of the Chinese words are bisyllabic, i.e. they are made of two characters as well as the meanings, like hand machine, 手机, cell phone, and buy sell, 买卖, business. But if you don't have a solid foundation in Chinese characters, many words in pinyin would look just similar. And if you never remember their tones, which is even worse, then I guarantee you're gonna get confused the whole time. You're welcome. Number four, how long does it take to learn Chinese? Believe it or not, how to learn Chinese in five minutes is one of the top searches about Chinese learning, according to Answer the Public. That's kind of shocking to me. I mean, even for French speakers learning Italian, or Japanese speakers learning Korean, or Mandarin speakers learning Cantonese, five minutes is just like, Nothing. And the more important question is, what does to learn Chinese even mean? To me, being a language instructor for nearly 10 years, students who learned Chinese could use the language comfortably, at least read social news and write a decent email, understand and communicate with natives naturally. They can keep the conversation going on, even though they might not be familiar with the topic. Last but not least, they can keep improving their language ability on their own. Of course, everyone has different goals, interests, and needs. For those of you who are not looking for a career using Chinese, but just learning for fun, take me learning Spanish as an example. Given there are just so many Spanish speakers in the world, including my in-laws, I always wanted to learn Spanish well. And I finally got to squeeze a few weeks last year and went to Instituto Cervantes in Beijing. I took 60 hours of A1.1 class for 12 days, did homework every day, and practiced what I learned as much as possible with my husband. Then I got 90% in the final test. In the test, we listened to conversations talking about the basic stuff, wrote a paragraph about a room picture, and described people's nationality and appearance in the spoken test. Another example for people who are looking to learn Chinese for fun when I taught Chinese 101 in an American university, we had 5 hours of class per week, so it's like 150 hours of class by the end of the school year. By then, the students were supposed to be able to introduce their basic information, hobbies, simple experiences and plans, describe the environment, and could read basic characters. And some of the students' final test results were a lot better than others. They were usually the ones that kept asking questions, pushing themselves to use the language, and coming to my office hours for more learning advice. So it's possible to make great progress in a relatively short term if you 1. Have a clear idea of how language works 2. Have intensive class and qualified teacher 3. Try your best to absorb the things you learned today and use it with native speakers if possible 4. Expose yourself to the language, especially the sounds, either in music, TV shows, or audiobooks as much as possible If you take learning Chinese really seriously and aim to reach a higher level, here's an example for you as well One of my current students who speaks a Slavic language and English has been learning with me nearly 600 class hours. When I first met her over two years ago, she struggled to put together a complete sentence. And now she speaks absolutely fluent Chinese, can handle everything in her day-to-day -day life in Beijing, and also feels confident working with an all-Chinese crew. But she's obviously worked really hard in and out of class. So my answer to how long will it take me to learn Chinese will be 600 hours of class time where the teacher focuses on explanation of the materials you use and correcting the pronunciation, vocab, grammar mistakes that make plus a lot more hours outside of class for review, practice, and input by listening and reading more. Number five, most people who study a language aren't learning the language. When we think of learning a language, what jumps to your mind first? Memorizing words and their translation? Reading a textbook? Or just a bunch of letters and characters? Fun fact, before we had a written language system, people communicated by speaking and listening to each other through sounds. All the way to modern life, 
We are now just so used to reading the symbols rather than listening to the sounds themselves. If you are living in China now or are thinking of studying or working in China, you definitely want to keep this in mind. Being familiar with the sounds is equally as important as the written system. It's a simple rule, but we just forget it easily. For Chinese learning, back to number two, take tones seriously and close your books, focus on the sounds around you. It'll take less time than you thought to be able to use the language to actually communicate with Chinese people. All right, guys, I can be your accent trainer, vocabulary and grammar instructor, or your writing coach. But in this very first video, I just wanted to be the one who gets you on the right path before you start honing any specific aspects of your Chinese language ability. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to see more. And leave a comment letting me know what you are struggling with in your Chinese. And remember, Chinese makes perfect sense. I'd like to know why. See you soon. It's amazing.